just a heads up. Subject matter. NRC site rep. About keeping their reputation. Here's an FYI. Also given the escalating situation, there are discussions about calling in the full Asian team for each shift. I don't think we need to change our schedule yet. We still don't have any direct communication with the plants in Japan and no way to confirm any of the information we are getting from CNN and others. There are two USAID disaster assistance response teams, DART, being deployed in Japan today. Not sure what their roles will be yet. GBJ wanted the NRC presence in the USAID mission. Further today, Bill Borshart cautions against attempting to regulate these plants. Not sure we know how not to do that. This is an increasingly stressful situation and questions are being asked that we can't answer. Consequently, there is a tendency to do what we do best, regulate. Now we're getting calls from ordinary citizens from California, Oregon, wanting to know if they need to evacuate. The liaison team was ready to deploy DOE assets to monitor the plume. Then someone realized that maybe HLS and EPA should take the lead. Yeah, the EPA will protect us. Individual was concerned about news reports that radioactive cloud reached California. I replied with response number one, and it indicated EPA is increasing its monitoring. Individual, as several others have wanted to know, more precisely, where the radioactive cloud is. We are not supplying that information, but just reiterate that we do not expect harmful levels. Just an FYI, lengthy email chain, full confirmation from FEMA and the EPA on where they refer in questions. Bloom effects in US to EPA, domestic plants to the NRC. Yes, that is correct for NRC and domestic power plants. EPA has lead coordinating role for impacts to environment and the US citizens and US land areas. Thanks, John. This is from Alexander Higgins blog. Confirmed. EPA rigged Radnet. McCarthy. Japan nuclear radiation monitoring equipment to report lower levels of Fukushima fallout. The EPA recalibrated rigged Japan nuclear radiation monitoring equipment, causing them to report lower levels of radioactive fallout after the Fukushima nuclear meltdown that was detected before the disaster. I recently programmed an application to pull out all the EPA radiation monitoring graphs for all major U.S. cities and compiled them into an easy-to-use web interface. Of course, we took the data being reported with a grain of salt under the suspicion that the feds were fiddling with the results. Now an investigative report looking into why the much of the EPA radiation monitoring equipment was offline when the Fukushima nuclear meltdown occurred reveals that the EPA has in fact rigged radiation monitoring equipment to report lower values of radiation. Sacramento the Terminator. What is being proposed? And then you have this long blank area that under all costs they removed it. I'm Willard, Bob Willard from PACOM. Go ahead, Bob. I'm Willard. Just a thought. Recall that this is a repeated event that we've had now. This is, I think, our third plume exposure as the winds blank, blank, blank couple paragraphs so this information is top secret you're not allowed to know where the plume goes you have no right to know where the plume goes it's none of your business do you think you can I guess confirming those dose rates or is it slightly lower too Wiggins PMT says we haven't gotten additional information yet. We'll check it out. Snyder. That that would be great for this evening's call because if you would, and if you could get that, that's something my commissioner was asking about. Wiggins. I think, yeah, but you should certainly alert your principals about the wind change. That's something they need to be, be cognizant because that, you know, for a large part of this event, it's been blowing offshore. Snyder. Right. 
Wiggins. So now that things are changing a bit, let's see what the effect is. Luckily though, I think there's not a lot of motive force for the release now. Things are, you know, substantially calming down. Nothing's blowing up a steaming as we speak. Snyder. Yeah, I guess then as Mike brought up, there may be potential that there may be some venting today on Unit 3. Admiral Donald. This is Kurt Donald. Just one correction on what you said there. The particulate levels that are being measured. The ones reported in the 2 to 7 by 10 to the 9th region. Those are being taken on the USS George Washington that is currently located in Yosaka, Japan, which is about 175 miles from the site. Mr. Burroughs? Actually, Admiral, this is Chuck Burroughs. What we saw was a plume on its way. We are still measuring 2 by 10 to the negative 9th at this location, 90 miles from the reactor plant, as well as now measuring 10 to the negative 9th down to the Yokosaka area. The plume is an extensive plume. I have readings at both locations that are above 10 to the negative 9th microcuries per milliliter as far as out as Yokosaka and as far in as the 90 mile point. We've not had a chance to find out from folks what the latest was in that phone call. Mr. Miller, if, if you're getting angst about moving naval ships and things like that, the worst case scenario isn't necessarily the one you want to run. Virgilio, right Charlie, this is what we're all thinking, that there, you know, you run at least two cases. Mr. Miller, yeah, Virgilio, where, where are you today with units three and four spent fuel pools? Miller, right, Virgilio, and what if that goes bad? And then the other worst case, then that would rape in the reactors as well, notwithstanding the fact that those reactors appear stable at this point. So they didn't want to move these naval ships in fear of freaking out the public, when they well knew that people on the Reagan and Washington were getting bombarded with radiation. Coming from last night before last evening shift, to develop projections for doses in California, and that is, has been in process. We will need to, in order to do that, we will need to engage with, we already have engaged with offices of research, we are looking to engage further with Sandia to make some modifications to the effectuate those doses estimates in California. In conjunction with that, there was a DITRA and NARAC dose estimate that was done for California that we obtained as part of the DOE, Department of Energy's briefing package, and those were estimating what we believe to be very high doses to children and thyroid dosage. We think extremely conservative modeling related to those doses and assumptions. It's a thyroid dose that involves deposition of materials, integrated the dose over a year or two, for example, drinking milk from the same cow that's grazing on the same contaminated field the entire time. Things like that. And remember, as the plume was heading toward the United States, they were telling people not to buy iodine while they were buying it for themselves to keep the price down. DOE, Department of Energy, preparing another AMS flight. Don't know the exact date. 20 millirem an hour at the main gate according to META, Ministry of Industry of Trade. PMT identified need to update the source from terms for modeling. A Melcor Trans-Pacific model needs to be worked. Shows about 4.5 rem iodine to children. Interagency agreed on our model last night. We have requested NARAC to make changes showing 70% core damage vice the 33% damage assumed previously. We are trying to ensure that the over errors in the 4.5 RAM dose and the 4.5 RAM does not get issued. Staff will lead a logical team in Japan to help the U.S. agencies and industry with support. IPO confirmed they have 1 million KI pills from Ambex. PMT continuing to develop re-entry plans for short-term re-entry for retrieval of personal effects. 
Zimmerman. Yes, and just to throw a value at you, to let you know why the concern is so high is that the Transamerica model guy from Scott Out is talking four and a half rams is a thyroid for infants in California. Chairman Jazz Co. Right, Mr. Zimmerman? So I think that's a high priority for us to get our arms around. Chairman Jasco? Yes. So they knew infants were in serious danger on the west coast for thyroid damage. And they told the people not to buy iodine. Mr. Weber, we did get some new information. We got the results of the NARAC run for the plausible bounding scenario that we were working on yesterday and that Steve and Charlie talked about yesterday. Blank, MF blank. While they show that throughout the United States, the total effective dose tags would not be exceeded, it does show concern with respect to thyroid doses. In Alaska, up to 35 far ran for a one year child projected thyroid dose. And that's for a northeast wind. And also up to 6.4 in Alaska for the thyroid dose for the one year old for an eastern wind. And in Midway, if the winds are from or to the east, which show a dose up to 4.9 rams to the thyroid for a one year old child. We are working through the interagency to understand and peer review those results. This is straight off the United States Nuclear Regulatory Commission's website that they do not think pregnant mothers should get should be under 0.5 rem wow people on the west coast and Alaska were getting 10 times that amount an unexpected mortality increase in the United States follows arrival of the radioactive plume from Fukushima is there a correlation the multiple meltdowns at the Fukushima plants beginning on March 11 are releasing large amounts of airborne radioactivity that has spread throughout Japan to other nations. Thus studies of contamination and health hazards are merited. In the United States, Fukushima fallout arrived just six days after the earthquake, tsunami, and meltdowns. Some samples of radioactivity and precipitation, air, water, and milk taken by the U.S. government showed levels hundreds of times above normal. However, the small number of samples prohibits any credible analysis of temporal trends and spatial comparisons. U.S. health officials report weekly deaths by age in 122 cities, about 25 to 35% of the national total. Deaths rose 4.46% from 2010 to 2011 in the 14 weeks after the arrival of the Japanese fallout, compared with a 2.34% increase in the prior 14 weeks. The number of infant deaths after Fukushima rose 1.8% compared with a previous 8.3% decrease. Projecting these figures for the entire United States yields 13,983 total deaths and 822 infant deaths in excess of the expected. These preliminary data needs to be followed up, especially in the light of similar preliminary U.S. mortality findings for the four months after Chernobyl fallout arrived in 1986. The future. If the current increase in mortality rate continues at its current pace, well over 1 million deaths will occur by the year 2031. Table 5 summarizes the cumulative deaths in the U.S. for selected time periods. Cumulative death in the U.S. for future years, assuming current death rate. Of course, the health effects of radiation exposure usually do not appear until 5 to 20 years after the exposure, and the death rate may increase dramatically in coming years.